Yes. Um, yeah, on here, there are, um, in fact, seven subgenera of seven of the nine subgenera of fritillaries. So we have um, just one species in, in the section Davidii, which occurs in uh, the monsoon area of China. Um, we have about um, six species within the Japonicas, which are just in Japan, the only place they are. Um, characterized particularly by the fact that they just have uh, two opposite leaves at the bottom and three leaves at the top and then a single flower, very delicate little plants. Um, we have uh, on the top left here, uh, the, the, the subgenus Lilio Riser, named because the bulbs are uh, like the lilies, they have several scales, usually five or more. Um, and they are mainly in California. They, they, there's one species goes all the way around the north of the Pacific and down into Japan uh, through uh, eastern Russia. Um, and and a, just a couple more species in, in sort of eastern China that belong to that lily rooted group, Lilio Riser. Um, there's the section Verticillata, which we've just identified uh, from the genetic work, is somewhat, somewhat different. Uh, and that's uh, contains a lot of climbing plants, but they're very tall. You can see um, that there's this little curled uh, leaf tips, which allow, enable them to uh, scramble up through scrub plants. Uh, here is uh, uh, Fritil Fritillaria verticillata itself, growing in Eastern Kazakhstan, um, and it's climbing up through spirea shrubs. And uh, there's a, several species in that group, about a dozen, no, a bit less than a dozen, which are confined to the eastern Istans, the old uh, Russian states, old USSR states, uh, and uh, northwestern China, Xinjiang province. Um, there is uh, the, the group here, rhinopetalums, rhinopetalum, rhino and nose, petalum, the petals. They have a, a, a big bump on the back, or several bumps on the back of the petals. Uh, so where, where, where are we? You can't, you know, you can just about see it on that one, which contains the nectar. Um, these are semi-desert plants. They occur in the, uh, from sort of uh, Iran, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Turkmenistan, um, and Kazakhstan through into uh, Eastern China, or, sorry, into Western China uh, in really semi-desert conditions, real steppe conditions. Um, and they need special conditions. Um, there's the section Teresia, which is just one species, which is Fritillaria persica, um, which is um, confined to more or less all the mountains around the Syrian Iraq desert. So from uh, Israel, uh, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, and down into Iran. Um, that occurs and it's got a, a, a raceme of flowers. So like a tall spiky flower, sp flower spike with lots of flowers on it, uh, usually brown or dull yellows. The biggest section is uh, section Fritillaria, which can have these lovely square bells or can have the more sort of tubular flowers, sometimes with the outer segments uh, flared. Uh, that's by far the biggest section and it goes right the way around, um, uh, around, around the world, um, particularly uh, in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and the Middle East. And if we go on to the next slide, uh, there's two more sections. There's a section Petillium, which you might be familiar with in gardens, the Crown Imperials. Uh, this one is Fritillaria edwardii, growing in Kyrgyzstan. Um, and it, it's characterized by this uh, tall stem, flowers around the, you can't see my hands, can you? Flowers around the, um, the top of the stem with a little tuft of leaves at the top. And then this single species, uh, Fritillaria sewazoii in the coral covia section, uh, which is in, um, again, the eastern uh, Istans um, and occurs in sort of, you know, scrub conditions um, uh, and, and conditions like that. And the flowers can vary from sort of dull browns and greens through to yellow. Uh, so there are these uh, nine, is it, was it I made? Yes, nine subgenus or subgenera um, that comprise the, the, the Fritillaria genus. Mm -hmm. And which, um, ones, which ones are you growing? Oh, all which of them. One? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, most of them. <laughs> we, have, we have examples of, of all of the sections. Uh, no, that's not true anymore. Actually, we, we, we now don't grow 
um, the, the previous one. We're, we're not growing this one anymore and we're not growing the japonicas. Uh, we find these too difficult uh, you know, uh, in, in our conditions. Mm -hmm. To say we have a, we live in Wales and it has quite an Atlantic climate and these are used to having a dry spell during the, the, uh, the resting season. Um, so they come from areas which have a Mediterranean or pseudo Mediterranean type climate where there's where you, you have a dry summer usually um, and a, and a, a, a wetter uh, spring in particular or winter. Various amounts of precipitation. The, the precipitation, of course, can be either snow or rain, uh, depending on altitude and where they are in the world. Um, so they need uh, we, we grow most of them in pots. Uh, in a greenhouse plunged in sand. Uh, so they're in clay pots plunged in sand in uh, a mixture of um, a sort of loam, soil, uh, grit, and some humus. Um, and they're watered in the period when they need to grow and they're kept dryish uh, or drier during the period when they're, when they're dormant. And they, they start, most start to go dormant in the summer uh, they're starting to go dormant here now. It is what early May, um, so uh, they will be kept much more much drier. In fact, some of them completely dry until we uh, we will repot them in the summer. But we start to water again in sort of the middle of September, usually, depending on the species and where it comes from, um, and when it would normally expect to come into growth. Mm -hmm. 